Okay, hi folks, I'm Patrick Bodell, and on behalf of ArtsQuest and the Saturday Late Night Movie Series, I'd like to welcome you to tonight's screening of Tommy Wiseau's The Room. Tonight we have an added bonus for you, a quick reading interview with The Room's own Lisa, Juliet Danielle. Hi, Juliet. Hey, Patrick. Hi, can you give a quick shout out to the good people of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania? Hey, everybody. I'm <laughs> so happy to be saying hello, and thank you for coming to see it. Oh, great. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing this. We really appreciate it. Uh, if I could ask you a couple of quick questions, that would be awesome. Um, let's go to a time before the room. Um, were you the classic Hollywood story girl from small town USA comes to Hollywood to kind of make a name for herself and somehow ends up being in the room? Yeah, that's that's actually a funny story, Patrick. Um, it's 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 hard to remember a time before the room just because um, it's just such a part of my life that won't go away. But um, <laughs> uh, about ten years ago, um, I was living in Sugarland, Texas. It's a suburb of Houston with my mom and my sister, and I had just come back from my second year of college and. Uh, my mom dropped it on me that she's moving to Los Angeles with my sister, and I was like, hey, can I come? <laughs> um, so we did. We packed up all of our stuff uh, in uh, a U-Haul and uh, later on another little U-Haul um, and uh, drove it out there, a 22-hour drive to Los Angeles. Um, so when it really comes down to it, I just kind of wanted to keep my family together. Um, and then once I got here, um, I was like 20 years old and was like, hey, I I might as well try it out. Um, so, you know, I was always a precocious little girl. So my mom was like, "Hey, go, go do it." So. Oh wow. Okay, let's let's cut right to the uh, audition. Now, you weren't originally cast as Lisa. Correct. Um, I was originally cast as Michelle, and um, the auditions were pretty crazy. Like. Um, Wow, uh, what a surprise. <laughs> what a surprise, right? Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the audition process, but most of the time for film, it's it's very standard. Um, you, you go in, uh, they either give you something to read or you do a monologue. But Tommy had this um, theater background, so um, it, was, it was really like being on a theater theater audition where you're there for a long time, you do some improv, um, he would throw you into these situations and and give you things like, um, you just won a million dollars, go, and, uh, or your mother just died, how do you feel? Um, things things like that. Um, and yeah, I was originally cast as Michelle, and I stuck around the longest, so uh, <laughs> they, they originally, uh, eventually gave me Lisa. Okay. Now, how did that switch come about? I would imagine... Tommy just completely off the cup said, "Okay, now you are Lisa." And was there a was there some kind of can you give us the scoop? Was there some kind of drama? Was or was uh, it just a very nonchalant thing where he just came in one day and said, "Okay, now you're Lisa," and that's that's it. <laughs> you know, it's it's been so long ago, and um, eventually, uh, I'm sure you know this. Greg's book is going to come out, and that's going to be like the God's honest truth because he was actually paying attention and sober <laughs> the entire time. And um, and for me, like, like she should have been, and but she had this other different accent that was very different from Tommy's and you guys that would have just been like way too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you do the room and it comes out. When did you get the sense that it had become this phenomenon? You know, it had become the room, you know? Yeah, um well in in that time uh, in my life, I, I was still going out at night a lot in Hollywood, and I did have some people recognize me then. Um, I don't have it quite so much now unless they, they're, they're people that, that follow me on Facebook that know I'm a brunette. But, yeah, back in the day, people would, would, would squeal and be like, oh, my God, I love your movie. And I'm like, you do? <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and then, you know, when social media really came about, um, that's really when, when I knew that uh, – Okay, this isn't going away. I'm, I'm going to embrace it, and and um, it's been really nice actually. The social media has been has been pretty cool. 
Okay. Um, did you did you really kind of go into hiding afterwards? Yeah. Yeah. I did. Um, yeah. I, I I think you probably got that from my Twitter. Um, it says that in my little um, you know description on my Twitter, and I did. I hid from it for for a really long time because I thought. You know, these movies um, that are bad get made in Hollywood all day long, you know, and um, most of the time nobody sees them, let alone continues to see it over and over and over again um, every Saturday for, for 10 years all over the world. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I think what made me come out of hiding was really um, just the positive support that I started to, to receive, um, you know, on, on Facebook and things like that. And it, it start when it started to outweigh the negatives is really when I was like, okay, I, I think I'm going to be okay. I can move on with my life a little bit. <laughs> because, like, we've had this discussion. You're one of the nicest people I've ever met in my entire life. Like, if I could tell a story that might be a little embarrassing for you, you oh, just had a fa you just had a Facebook post where you were in tears because you had accidentally stepped on a snail on the way into your house. Yeah. So the people of ArtsQuest, if I could tell you, when I say Juliet would not hurt a fly, I mean that literally. <laughs> so now when we come to Lisa, who's a very bad person, and the audience really latches on to how bad this person is and her bad motivations, that, that's, that's got to be tough for you. Um. Or well, do, actually, do you just do you just let it roll off your back now, or do you go with it? Like, well, see, I don't I don't go to the screenings anymore. Um, I I've probably seen it five times, and and I think that's kind of my limit, like forever. Um, the nudity, you know, I just I can't see it. But as far as like having people yell at me because I'm a bad person, I'm totally okay with that because I love characters like as an actor like um, getting to play a character that's different than me is just so much fun and, and liberating you know yeah oh alright so it, it's come full circle for you then really yeah yeah I think so um, and you know if I was a room fan I would yell at me too <laughs> so who do you still keep in touch with oh goodness um, you know I I don't keep in, in great touch with Tommy, but every time I see him, you know, we give each other a big hug. He's he's really sweet, and um, I know. Oh, let, let, let's get this. I've asked you this question privately, but is he? Al he's always like that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't remember him wearing all the belts. Um, I think that may be like a new trend he was trying. But the sunglasses, the hair, um, the um, the wife beater type shirts, um, the act accent his his ability okay this is my favorite thing about Tommy his <laughs> ability to talk to, to answer a question and talk for like 10 minutes and, and you have no idea what he said like if you were trying to take notes right <laughs> at the end of the 10 minutes you would look down and you would not have anything that you were able to write there I, I love that about him and he, he was like that from day one <laughs> all right so he, he is like there's no off switch no, basically. no, Tommy's Tommy, and he's really sweet, and and he really, really loves the room fans. You know, he he's. I, I saw him. Um, I think at the Sunset Five, and he comes up the. Um, it's on the second floor, right? And he comes up the escalator, and then he stands precariously on this ledge so that everyone can see him. And the entire time I'm thinking, oh, God, you know, he's not covered for that. <laughs> but, yeah, he was just standing up there on this tiny little ledge, waving. Oh. So uh, you keep in touch with uh, Philip Halderman. I do. Uh, Philip's from Arizona. Yeah. yeah. And he has a comic book series based on his experience in the room. Have, have you seen it yet or no? Um, I, I saw... Um, a lot of the original pages before they even came out. Um, oh, all right. I, no, I don't have an actual copy. Um, I guess because I'm a bad friend. That's, that's really <laughs> horrible. I need to fix that. Um, but it's really cute. It's called My Big Break, and I actually drove over to um, Arizona last year so we could film um, like a, the teaser trailer for it. Oh, okay. So I think oh. that's on YouTube.
YouTube or Vimeo or something like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll post a link. I'll, I'll have the folks post a link to it. Um, and then Greg, you still keep in touch with? I do. I keep in touch with Greg um, on Facebook. Um, the Greg on Facebook is the real Greg, just so you know. I can't vouch for Tommy. <laughs> um, yeah, Greg and Philip have, have a legitimate Facebook page. And then um, also um, Kyle, the guy that played Peter, the psychologist. Oh. Yeah, we, um, we always hang out at Comic-Con together. Oh, okay. You're going again this year. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm going to go for all four days so I can get um, – last year I, I missed the wrestlers. Oh, um, all right. So this year I'm going to camp out until I get to take a picture with one of them. I don't care who it is. <laughs> Awesome. So, what are you working on now? Um, actually, I haven't announced this yet, so you'll be the first one. Um, awesome. This, um, web series called Promo, um, and I got uh, one of the supporting roles. Um, her name is Cadence, and it's about you know um, these video gamers, and I'm really excited because um, they're they're in their twenties. So I can still play 20s. Yay, girls, you know what I'm talking about. All right, there you go. Very cool. It's like so. getting carded when, when, you, when you go to buy, a, <laughs> go to buy some beer. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, that still happens for beer, but not cigarettes anymore. That, that, uh. was, <laughs> that was hard. Yeah. Um, so uh, what else do you have going on? Now, you have your Etsy store, which I came across by accident. And that's funny. You do uh, what do you do on Etsy? Um, I do um a lot of spoon paintings, um, just like little eight by ten um acrylic like paintings of brightly colored spoons. Um, and I need to put some more up. But um, if anybody just wants to find out more about me, um, they can just go to julietdaniel.com or you know stalk me on Facebook or Twitter. But you can you can find it all there. Pretty much anything worth knowing is is up there. Great. So. That's perfect. All right, thanks again for doing this. I really appreciate it. And um, once again, thanks for coming out. Thanks, and Patrick. I, I hope you guys enjoy uh, the screening. Great, thanks. We appreciate it.